Good morning, Goddard. This is Anthony Wilkinson. It is June the 3rd, 2010, and I'm down at the uh, Goddard Harbor. Um, you can uh, look behind me. You will see the return, the Goddard elevators, and this is the uh, in internal harbor here, and then you'll see the uh, roadway leading up to the Sifto plant, or the Sifto mine, I should say, and you'll see some trucks, and you'll see, of course, a line of rail cars. Uh, heading down there to the salt. Just on the other side, I don't know if you can make it over to the, uh, is the marina. And t this morning I'd like to talk to you about doing what you do and how to be effective at, at, uh, at your business. And a couple cautions and a couple recommendations. When I say do what you do, for instance, if you make a product uh, and that's your level, level of expertise and that's your, you know, that's your greatest skill. Uh, you bring to the company, you need to focus on providing that skill as much as possible. And what I mean is that, um, you know, locally, I mean, we're in Huron County, there's a lot of uh, a lot of companies that have people in multiple roles, and it's kind of by necessity. Uh, people have to do more with less resources. Uh, companies can't afford to have, like, uh, separate payroll items for every area of speciality. So there's a lot of people that you know, that work kind of these slash positions. And a lot of times um, I work with these companies and I try to, you know, as I work as a consultant, I try to kind of eliminate one of the slashes from someone's position to free them up to really do what they do best. Uh, and I just like to talk about sort of, and in businesses, you know, how do you go about bringing in that expertise and where is the best fit? It's different for every business, but certainly everybody, depending on what business you're in, if it's not your core business, so if you're manufacturing a product, then you should be bringing in, uh, I mean, this easy example for my business, you should be bringing in IT people, IT consultants to say, okay, uh, Canada traditionally, uh, I was at a talk where the Minister of Industry was saying, a Canadian uh, manufacturing company spent about 50% uh, the level of ICT that they should be, ICT being basically uh, information technology infrastructure, either for automation purposes, uh, for logging purposes, uh, to you know, refine processes, things like that. And usually, uh, he says on the whole, um, they're only about manufacturing industry is only about half as automated as it could be, or half as uh, as using te so using half as many information technology tools as it could be uh, to get the most effect out of their business. And a lot of it is because. If you're a manufacturer, you're building a product, your you're, you're you're, uh, specialty is the process of, of creating that product, not necessarily uh, in looking to, you know, not, and not knowing what tools are out there in terms of technology that can help you better uh, distribute, produce, market that product. So, uh, And so when you bring in outside expertise, you can bring it in from a, a pool of local talent, you can bring it in from, you know, so we're talking consultants. You can uh, hire new staff as a full-time staff member. And another thing that I'd like to suggest, and it's actually worked well for me in the past, is talking to the competition. So other people who are in your industry are, or ideally in a similar but different uh, niche of your industry to pick their brains. When I was looking to start out in the consulting business, I called a, uh, I don't even know where I found it. I think it was online. I found a press release from a company in Barrie who was, uh, a fairly large, successful consulting company in Barrie who was looking to um, open a branch office in Toronto. And so I called them and got through to their vice president. Um, and I had a really good talk with him saying, you know, here's what I do now is, you know, I'm a director of information technology for a, uh, for locally a large company, but I mean, not certainly not on the enterprise level, but, it, you know, it'd be a, it'd be a uh, medium-sized business. And I said, how do you run your business? What sort of things are you looking to do? What, uh, who do you target market? Who, what's your sort of target labor rate? Uh, who are you looking to hire for staff? What's, you know, what are the biggest problems you're facing? And we must have talked for probably two hours on the phone. It was, uh, it was a really great experience. A, because I just happened to reach somebody uh, and to get some really unvarnished opinions from them and, and, and from someone who was running a successful company uh, it was very helpful for me starting up. And 
So that's a, that's one thing I, I suggest you do. The other thing is I anybody who's looking to bring in outside expertise is uh, I always say vet vet them before and trust them after. And I, actually, I, I kind of view the the hiring process of staff the same way as put them do your do your work up front. So uh, when you bring in a, a consultant or you're looking to bring in an employee. Put them through the ringer beforehand. So ask them lots of questions. Make sure you you really are comfortable with their level of knowledge, uh, and you know look at their background, look at their referrals, and really have a good feeling about what their levels of expertise are, and and be sure about it before you bring them in. And once you bring them in, I you know trust them. And I know that's a maybe a, a people are going to frown at that, but trust them as much as possible anyway. Without you know without signing over the business, but. Uh, designers, a, a group of people who I have just the, the total respect for, uh, graphic designers, uh, even product designers, always struggle with this. Uh, they're hired on their body of work, and when they get brought into a project, is often what happens if, if they're not careful is the other party basically dictates the design of. Uh, down to just down to the the bare level. So they're telling designers, you know, where to put like specific elements on web pages down to like pixels and and how to put them in there and and what colors and um, and the idea is a designer is you trust the designer to uh, to work with your brand to create a product that you can give to the public. Um, the designer isn't there to steer the mouse. While you kind of like hold the back of their head and move them around, it's they're not like a remote pilot mechanism for for Photoshop or what have you, and you have to be careful about that situation. So that's all I can really say about that. I mean, I talk to any designer and they'll probably go on at length, but certainly in my experience in the web world, uh, uh, building projects is the best project and the best results have been where the client has allowed you to to kind of stretch a little bit. You're staying within their brand. You're working with the client, not going and building something they don't want. Um, but certainly, in terms of visual design, it's you know they can look and go, yes, I this is, I know automatically this is this company that we're dealing with, this is this brand we're working in. But you're allowed to work within that envelope and create an exciting product because what happens is is typically the more people get involved and um, it tends to dilute it. You end up with a copycat sort of thing that this web page looks like, this web page looks like, this web page. There's no differentiation. Uh, and it's really it actually ends up weakening your brand overall. And I like to put that onto the onto the flip side, and that is the you know if you're looking if you are an expert and you're looking to get out there and, and help companies, um, it's also important to vet the clients you're going to work with, and that if they're they're going to gr grill you and they should be grilling you, and you should be asking them questions back to just make sure there's a fit to get up front you know how you like to work. How they like to work, and is that you know, is there a mesh there? Can you both compromise? Uh, by compromising, can you both work together to to get a project done? And will the client respect your expertise? Um, and one, the best way to demonstrate expertise as well is creating little video blogs. Good morning. <laughs> and, um, and and put some knowledge out there either through writing articles, creating videos. Uh, and it's easy for to act as, you know, it's easy. I can't get out there and pitch as many people as I'd like to, and I can't get out there and talk to as many people as I'd like to because I, I mean I really enjoy doing that. Um, but by creating a, you know, a series of videos or by creating a bunch of, you know, articles, uh, podcasts, things like that, and putting them out there, people get a good idea of who you are, what your expertise level is, and probably what you're like to work with. And so that's a great way. Uh, to a have more visibility. B give clients some comfort in terms of this is what this person is like. I mean, we can always you can fake it, but you can't fake it forever. Um, and C if you know the clients will know also if you're a good fit for them, and maybe you're not, and that's also very beneficial. You don't really want to get into one of those relationships where you're trying to satisfy somebody who you both have completely different objectives. So anyway, that's what I'll talk for this morning. Thanks for watching. I hope to hear from some comments. You know, let me know if I'm off base, or let me know if, if uh, you know, what I'm saying is work for your organization or business. And I hope to hear from you soon. Good morning, Godrich.